Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem wa atiullah ati rasul wa ulul amri minkum. <coughs> and a reminder was for myself and abdukul ajeezu da'eefu, miskeenu, zalim, jahalun. But for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. And alhamdulillah, we talked about the interaction of Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Qidr. And that Nabi Musa took a path in which I will not stop until I reach of this higher reality and the secret of the two rivers where they meet. I won't stop, I want these knowledges and with tafakkur and contemplation what is the secret for our lives? That when Sayyidina Musa is meeting a guide that not visible, somebody asked, oh now all the people who deal with jinn they're going to be like kooky because they're going to think they have to now deal with unseen. No, no this is Sayyidina Musa it's not about me and you. Me and you need a physical guide step by step, step by step and we'll go into the killing of the boy. This is about the nafs and the levels of the nafs and you see where you are on the lowest or on the highest, then you'll know if you're near the station of that reality or not. But for now we agree that we're not at that level. So this is about following a guide and Sayyidina Musa salam is asking for a higher reality because Sayyidina Musa salam represents the attribute of Divinely hearing and he asked for the opening of Divinely seeing, right? Kalimullah he hears. So Sami al-Basir, these are a station in reality that people who want an ascension, why do they go to tariqahs? They want to hear from what they're not hearing. Every masjid you go to the imams you hear the same thing. So they want some food for their ears and they want something for the eyes of their heart. They want to see of a reality. They want to, to reach of a reality because they know and Allah put within them a yearning that what you see is but an illusion. Is this it? This, this life of ours that's all that I'm here for? An agnostic will say, yeah that's it. Even when we post something about the thing, somebody posted back, that's it, there is nothing in the grave. <laughs> oh no, you got a big surprise for you <laughs> So this sifat of hearing and seeing. So then you're guided to the turuqs with these three main tests. And we said Naqshbandiyatul Aliya so high that Sayyidina Khidr is in the shajara, is in the chain. So he's directly inspiring these teachings as he taught Sayyidina Musa It was big. It wasn't teaching regular people, <laughs> it was teaching Sayyidina Musa of a higher reality. So you come to the boat, you're the guide that nobody can see and think of the position of Sayyidina Musa And we said last night that's why we repeat it because sometimes these talks go over your head very fast. But he came for knowledges and he is now being taken onto a boat to break the boat and he's getting angry, why are you breaking the boat? And we said that awliya come into our hearts and begin to describe why is he getting angry? Because of social pressure. Why? What do you care if somebody breaks a boat while you're sitting on it? Well because he's following a guide that nobody can see. So it looks like he's breaking the boat. So he's a prophet of Allah and his, his aqeedah was too tough, eye for an eye. So like we said before this was like uh, Sayyidina Jalaluddin Rumi and Shamsi Tabriz. Anytime you're too tough and Allah wants to guide you, He will guide you to people who their job is to soften you through crushing. And Nabi Musa very tough. 
belief, eye for eye, that's it. He's sitting on the boat thinking, now how am I going to implement eye for an eye? I broke a boat of an innocent person and he asked in the dialogue, are you trying to drown the people of this boat? So they must have had people on the boat while he's sinking down. Because he didn't say it's an empty boat. The ayat Kareem is describing, are you trying to drown these people by breaking this boat? They clearly can't see you, they think I'm trying to drown them. Now there's going to be a penalty against me from these people, how am I going to explain to them we're breaking a boat? So it means then the key of that understanding and the reality of this taslim was social pressure. He had a, a, a sense of, what are people going to say? If it didn't feel there was any social pressure or anyone going to say anything, there's nothing to comment about. Because nobody sees him, he's just something happening, so that was ajeeb, you know, you broke a boat, that's something. But to invoke a comment, it is a, a sign for us that there was a social pressure, there was a distress, there was something happening now, how am I going to answer for this? And the key and the reality of our submission in opening the ears and opening the eyes, Allah drawing our attention that the difficulty of your submission is social pressure. How am I going to follow these people and what they're going to say about me? How am I going to grow my beard and what they're going to say about me? My relatives, my parents, my people I know, people at work, hey we know who you were, why you look like this now? You joined the God squad? <laughs> say, yeah, <laughs> Allah inspires. So social pressure stops everyone in their levels of submission. They want to take it to the next level, now I want to start wearing sunnah. Now when you know the key to submission is your ability to control and overcome social pressure, what then shaitan took as a whole path now? Social media to increase social pressure. He took the one key and made it the whole world. So that if you thought things were difficult before, imagine generations growing now where everything is on 10,000 cameras. You want to grow a beard, there are 10 people photographing you at work, putting it everywhere out. So social dilemma became the entire earth because shaitan knew the key. So I'll make now social pressure so dominant by social media and Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and every device they have is now horrifically damaging people based on social pressure. They can't walk, talk, move right, left without the fear of what is this social media going to say and we live in a time of dajjal and dajjal means deceit. And now you live in a world of complete deceit. You're surrounded by what you think are, I have 5,000 friends, me I have a million two friends on the internet <laughs> of which I don't know 10 of them. <laughs> I don't know these people, they're not my friends. But shaitan wants you to think, no they're your friends, I have friends, you know who I am, I got friends. You're lucky in life to have two people that you trusted or one person that you trusted. All is now but an illusion and based on these friends, I have now an image to upkeep. I say, are you crazy? Have you talked with these people who, who are image conscious? I know many of them like that. So I have an image to keep, I can't do like that, I can't be seen here, I can't do it. They walk to take a photograph, they eat to take a photograph, they buy clothes just for the purpose of a photograph. If you give them regular shoes they won't take a picture of it, they say, no this has to be a specific type of shoe. The ten other friends have posted that picture of that shoe. So now that little problem is the whole of this dunya. What became little was the ability to have faith now, it was reversed. Instead of the ocean of faith being large and the key of deceit being small that you could overcome, shaitan made the, the ocean of deceit large 
and the key of faith virtually impossible for somebody to enter now. How am I going to do it? The whole world's going to know. You go to events now and people like trying to hide from the cameras, why? Because they thought maybe they can come to do zikr and their families won't know. But they say, no this shaykh is a million people, as soon as he posted the, the, the potential of those photos going to you know hundreds of thousands of people, then people are hiding. Thinking they could be something anonymous out of the fear of social media. Okay. So then we saw how this key now flipped the whole earth and this is what they call a dajjal system. So when people are not saying, no, no it's not here, it's already here. The system has been implemented, people are living a, lie, a, a life of complete deceit, friends that are not their friends. And the more you compromise yourself, the more they'll like you. You watch shows. When they post a picture of themselves regular, nobody likes it other than the religious. You have to take your clothes off to get likes. Now many social media people they even took their hijab off to get more likes and they entered now the realm of dajjal. The shaykh you don't have likes like these other people, well, yeah unless the shaykh has to take his clothes off to get likes, he's not going to get likes. You're going to get 10 likes and that's it because nobody wants knowledges. So you think that those are your friends encouraging you towards badness or this is dajjal and his, his implementation of his, his hukum, his government and his way and his complete movement into that already now implemented in China that your social profile will base on who you are, how you eat and what you can interact with. Right? So they'll take your social profile and say, if the collective whole likes you, you can rent an apartment. If we look at your social number, your index, instead of a credit number which was companies getting together and saying, okay this is how many loans you have, this is how many outstanding debts you have, they implemented now a social media service where your, your score now is not based on your finances but what people think of you and what the government standards. So imagine a day comes when they say, no you know beards, we give a down to that. And then all of a sudden everyone you know puts a down mark, your social score drops. You can't rent, you can't buy, you can't travel, you can't do nothing because they want to know, why is your score so low? Oh so you're not like playing with us, huh? You're not playing with us, you're not going to play at all. That's a dajjal system. All from this reality of sinking a boat. So the key for that understanding was, don't care what people think, fear only Allah You see it's already being implemented, go in, go out, go in, go out. You can come back out now, go back in now. Well according to who? When you go out Allah's not going to send something because they said you go out and when you go back in Allah can't get you in because they said go in. Something's already taking place. So this reality of the boat and the reality of the rizq has to be brought down, the attention of the student has to be gained, they're just running after their rizq and their money and that running is causing a deceit within them. And their money that they're gaining and the activities that they're doing is holy for shaitan and not for Rahman. And in the end in the qab they will have immense regret that that's all you ran for? was for yourself, that's it. And all that you accomplished in your life was for yourself. That's why then the turuqs when the intention is to be guided and it doesn't matter what your intention is. If Allah's intention for you to be guided on the hadan Allah, we said in Jummah there's no hadi, there's no guidance from Allah unless Allah guides. And when He guides He sends them to waliun murshidun. And when they're guided by Allah the first thing Allah will begin to cut the rizq. He didn't destroy the boat, He sunk the boat. 
means that there's a hope that this boat will come back up if everything is done correctly. So that means our rizq is essential in our direction in our path. And that's why when you give a gift you say, here's my amanat, my amanat, Shaykh I'm returning an amanat. Don't think it's from your paycheck that your cleverness got it, it's yours and that you're kind enough to give a, a portion back to the charity but it's an amanat. See how now you can, you can begin to tame your nafs where the other way your nafs is very happy with you. Oh yeah, share from what we have to these people and the nafs is like, <coughs> I'm giving it out to everybody. No, no, remind your nafs, no, no. This is actually what Allah entrusted me with, that every single step was entrusted to me by Allah and Allah went over everything. When I send you to earth, you're going to have this, you're going to do this, you're going to have this, you're going to do this, you're going to have this, you're going to do this, وَقَالُوا bala. And I said, yes. And Allah described, you're jahulan, you're a completely ignorant creation, I can't imagine you just said yes. Right? Didn't Allah say somewhere else that the insan is jahul, he's ignorant. He doesn't remember the promise he made to Allah and that you're held accountable to that promise? That it's not for you to do what you want to do and live your life the way you want to live your life? Your life is not yours, your life is your Creator's. He created that life, He brought it into existence and He's taking it back whenever He wants. So then taslim is to understand this is not mine, this is an amanat and a trust. Those children are not mine to beat them, they're Allah's. You don't do what you want with your children, they're Allah's. Says, I gave those souls in your custody like a shaykh. They're not his students, these are Allah's creation. That Allah said, I'm going to test you and entrust you with them. Let me see what you do and how you guide them. There's no difference between a father and a mother with children. They're not your kids, you do with them, you submerge them, you, you, you do any type of thing with them. Your responsibility was a trust from Allah to teach them about their Creator, the one whom owns them and that they will return back to Him salam, the, not the alayhi salam but back to Allah so our whole life was to teach about that reality and to understand that everything we have is nothing to do with us and a Muslim and somebody who is in taslim and submission is learning the way of submitting, I am but a servant and whatever Allah has given to me, I'm asking Ya Rabbi raise me to the reality of my servanthood in which I'm here to serve. Then Nabi Musa what we're going in tonight, he goes to the boy. There's a creation and Nabi Musa's with the unseen guide, this child passes away. There's no act of violence, it's an unseen guide. People think, oh this is horrific, how they killed somebody? Two things, Nabi Musa didn't kill anyone, he's just sitting and watching. The child whew, died. But because he sees, he sees that he's being taken back. One <laughs> understanding is that when everyone dies there's somebody there. Nobody's just going on their own. Malik al-Mawt and the representatives of the angels of death stand right by that creation. When the moment comes that they're supposed to die, they're there and the soul is pulled and that person falls, calamity, crushed, whatever the, is written for that servant. And Nabi Musa is witnessing that reality that this servant when he goes present Allah's calling the soul back, is back to Allah the body falls. Not that he killed anyone, there's no, there's no violence in here and he's astonished to it because the one he complained before of the boat, now he even added more adjectives 
this is truly a horrific thing you have done. Tariqah comes to teach that today what the reality of that is, is Mawt al Qabl al Mawt where Prophet brings the perfection of all the Prophets. The perfection of the Divinely house which is the Qalb al Insan is the master of the house of Allah and comes and teaches that you have to reach a state of death before death. And this child that was naughty and described by Allah as naughty child, these are the levels of the nafs. And if you don't come after this level and you don't go after your nafs, you will be raising a pharaoh. And we say every child is a cute little cub, mm -hmm. right? Every kid is a cub, cub is cute, is cute, cute. You see these people who like they adopt pets? They get like a little baby lion because they look cute when they're small. But as soon as that lion's one years old, he's eating the home and every child in their home, anything they have in their home that lion is eating it because that's his nature. He's been raised wild. So anyone you raise wild and allow them to be wild, they're going to grow up as a wolf to come to eat you one day. Our nafs if it's not tamed not controlled, not under discipline, then we are definitely falling into these sicknesses. So then tariqah comes one to control the rizq and teach the student that your rizq has to go down. You have to understand the purpose of your rizq was not to give only to yourself but was to accomplish your akhirah, fi dunya hasanat wal akhirah hasanat. Allah is giving you an opportunity to build your paradise home, how? With your dunya. Everything you do and make and, and serve and give is building your home and paradise. People here think, no, no I'll do good here and maybe Allah will give me a home there. Well, why don't you start being sharp and buy it from now? Why would you wait to see if Allah is going to give something there? Buy it from now. Everything that you do, Ya Rabbi, all my mawlids, all my practices, all I'm doing, Ya Rabbi, grant me a house near the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Fi dunya hasanat, the, the goodness of my dunya, it becomes a means in which to accomplish my akhirah. So when the time they're now moving to the nafs and the turuqs and the real turuqs, they must be focusing on this levels of the nafs. And they don't have to teach you the science of each one, each one, just accompany them. Click the link now to subscribe. <laughs>